the U.S. unleashes its unfound drone prowess, AI is already competing with college grads for jobs, and India launches a mission to Uranus. Right. We know that there's companies that we've discussed in the in past episodes that their entire purpose of being is to eventually create entire technologies and armies of non-humanoid combatants, be it drones, be it robots, what have you. And that these, right. And that these things are going to go out and fight battles without anyone at the controls. That's all good until it turns into some crazy futuristic dystopian movie and the thing's attacking the wrong side or whatever. But even humans can make mistakes where we've had some soccer players score on their own net. But ultimately, it is important because if we don't advance, other countries will continue to do this. There was an important announcement regarding U.S. military drone technology. One of the things we've always been upset about is that the best drones really are made in China. There's no debate and we don't have yeah. any really great American-made drones, both for certainly for commercial industrial use and for even for for people that have that are hobbyists. And that may change now as the military is taking a stronger position. We have a video that it's a little it's a little corny, but it makes the point. And I do think it's a great announcement. So we could probably put up that next. Let's take a look. It is a little corny, I will warn you, but it's okay. It it does the trick. Here we go. And this is Pete Hexedge and his crew just basically making the announcement. You know what? We know why we were put here. We were brought here to rebuild the military, match capabilities to the threats of today. So while our adversaries have produced millions of cheap drones, before us, we were mired in bureaucratic red tape. Not anymore. In June, President Trump issued an executive order unleashing American drone dominance to bolster our drone industry and arm our war fighters, because that's what we're all about. So today I'm rescinding restrictive policies that stifle production, and this will unleash American manufacturing and the ingenuity of our war fighters by doing three key things. First, we're gonna bolster the US drone manufacturing base by producing thousands of American-made products, prioritizing by American. We'll arm combat units with a variety of low-cost American-crafted drones, leveraging our world-leading engineers and AI experts. And third, we're gonna train as we expect to fight. Senior officers, I'll grab this, this is the memo. Senior officers must overcome bureaucratic risk aversion in budgeting, weaponeering, and training. So here's the memo we're signing today, delivered via drones, here on the front lawn of the Pentagon with some of our great warfighters flying them. This is the future. We're in the fight. We're in the fight to win it. I'm never going to back down. Like I said, it's a little corny, but it gets the message across. I think it's well needed. China dominates the drone manufacturing industry. And the technology is amazing. So I'd like to yeah. see us. And if we're doing this and unleashing this for the military, we're going to see this in the private sector as well. We're going to have technology we can actually be proud of buying that is that is made in America. And I do think we need to have that. So the only way to succeed in military is to succeed in the commercial market, because the only way to succeed is mass manufacturing, right? We have to outproduce the Chinese. We have to have better tech, and that's probably the easier part for us. But what we really do is that we have to outmanufacture the Chinese, and the manufacturer are masters at mass manufacturing. This is a challenge for, of all people, Elon, because he has that expertise in mass manufacturing. There are not a lot of people, not a lot of companies in the United States with those expertise. I just, yeah, again, very important message. I think Andreal really is the one American company that's on the forefront of developing in-house really advanced American drones, both air drones and naval drones and everything in between. They're doing a phenomenal job. In terms of AI on the battlefield, a company called Palantir is really at the very forefront and they're really ahead of the rest of the world in that and they're phenomenal. Um, but again, it really all depends on mass manufacturing. We can invent the most advanced drones in the world. That's not the challenge is to produce them in the millions affordably, right? What our defense apparatus is very good at is manufacturing things extremely slow, extremely over budget, very late and very small numbers. We can't build ships and sh ships anymore. We can't build anything anymore because we've lost a lot of our manufacturing prowess. And that's really what's important. And that's really what needs to come back to the United States. But unless we can mass manufacture a good technology for an affordable price, 
it's meaningless, right? You can have one of the best, but it's it, it, war is a numbers game and uh, quantity has a quality all of its own. I think the most ironic thing about this announcement is that chances are that the drone that delivered the memo was either a Chinese drone, or even if it was assembled in the United States, it was assembled, made by mostly Chinese parts. And I just think that's ironic. Hopefully next time there's such an announcement and maybe he'll have something delivered by a drone again, that will be a hundred percent American drone, not just a drone with an American flag slapped on it. Yeah. And I, there are some manufacturers that are US based. They're just that I think dollar for dollar, the Chinese product just is incredibly good, but yeah. we just, we have some catching up to do, but it looks like for once we're going to put our money where our mouth is and we're going to do that. And I think that's a big thing, really where things are headed. And we talked about AI advancing, Grok 4, new technology. And one of the things that's happening now that's being reported is that a lot of graduates they come out with their degrees and they can't get jobs. And they're saying that AI is already taking their jobs. We've covered this in previous episodes, but there's an interesting CBS weekend news story that I think I'd like us to play for the audience so we can discuss a little bit. I think that's something that's important for everybody to really grasp. We've been saying this for some time that this is coming sooner rather than later. It doesn't mean that all the doctors will be replaced tomorrow or what have you, but there are impacts that are happening already, not even three years down the road. Let's take a look at that. The unemployment rate for new college grads has recently surged, and some economists say businesses are now replacing entry-level jobs with artificial intelligence. Here's CBS's Ali Bauman. Front gate, front gate. 22-year-old Michael Macaluso just earned his degree in mechanical engineering from the University of Connecticut. Feel good? But this summer, he's Water back is. helping manage his hometown pool. He hasn't found a job in his field despite applying for nearly 200 positions. Did you have any expectations about what the job market would be like when you graduated? I was told by a lot of people that I was going to get a job right out of college. And then all of a sudden, there's no jobs. New research finds now, for the first time ever, the unemployment rate among recent college graduates has exceeded the national unemployment rate, ballooning to 6.6% over the past 12 months. Oxford Economics, Matthew Martin. This is, goes against what you would expect. Those with higher educational attainment usually have better employment prospects than those with less educational attainment. Martin's team believes companies are eliminating formative entry-level jobs, the work handed over to artificial intelligence. Tech companies are leading the way. AI is permeating every aspect of our lives. Nariman Farvardin, the president of Stevens Institute of Technology, says his school has been preparing for the AI revolution for the last 10 years. He expects disruption throughout the workforce will be bigger than the disturbance brought on by the introduction of the Internet. And it could last up to 15 years. I think AI has the potential to either augment or maybe totally replace jobs that are physically or cognitively repetitive. These jobs are not only done by entry people. There are certain people who do repetitive things for all of their life. Those jobs are in jeopardy. Kaylee Totlin just graduated from Stevens with her computer science degree. She did an internship with Verizon as a sophomore, and the company has now hired her. I think something that's important with entry-level jobs is the networking and the opportunities that you make from it. Farvardin says his message to students today is the same as it always has been. Get an education that will last a lifetime. We don't try to teach our students skills. We try to teach students a way to learn on their own for the rest of their lives. He says workers who innovate alongside AI won't get left behind. Ali Bauman, CBS News, Eastchester, New York. Quite the warning. Yeah, and we've been discussing this extensively on the past. And it is true, especially in terms of computer science. And uh, I wouldn't go work for Verizon because they probably aren't very innovative in terms of computer science. But anyhow, we have seen basically a hiring freeze, all the tech giants. They're not necessarily mass firing people. Instead, they're allowing people to use AI to become more productive and thereby not needing to hire anymore. So instead of being criticized for mass firing people, they're just not hiring as many people. And instead, they're empowering every person who already does work for them to utilize AI more. So I think that's, uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's coming. 
basically all of our jobs are in jeopardy. And uh, that is a very scary prospect to, to discuss. And we should probably discuss a post-scarcity world and what meaningful life would look like once jobs are no longer a thing even if money or at least goods and services are bountiful. And the one thing I did want to touch on is the continued ed education. The important thing is not to memorize. The important thing is to learn how to learn. I never went to university. I don't have any degree. I'm clueless, but at least I learned how to learn. So if there's something I want to figure out, I can usually learn it on my own. That's something that's very different between the American kind of model and the at least in other countries where in America, you were told that this degree will be your tool set. And with that tool set, you'll be able to make money for the rest of your career. And now that you have the degree, you're good to go. In a lot of other countries like Germany, for example, where on the job training and apprenticeship is much more common, continual training is much more prevalent. And it's, you don't just study once and you're finished. No, once a year or something, you go back to study more to become more powerful. And unless you can innovate along with AI and good luck doing that, yeah, human jobs are at risk. And it, we're, this is the beginning of the end for human employment. And we really don't know what comes after that end. So it is uh, scary because the thing that scares humans most of all is uncertainty. I would say, listen, the value of education that I see, I'm, I've not been a big fan. I've been an educator in various capacities throughout my life. And I can tell you that generally speaking, the learning model that's used for the most part is broken and misguided. Really what that I get out of going to university and what when I did my master's, what do I see as its biggest value? And really was, it's a, it was a demonstration maybe to prove that I knew what, I could demonstrate what I was being asked to demonstrate. But more importantly, it really made me prove that I could think. There's really no other value to it. It really was the most important thing. It was a demonstration that I could think and solve problems. And that's really what most education should be about. And I think that anyone that's going to school because they want a degree that's going to teach them a specific skill set and they think that's the end of the road. Even medicine, most of what doctors learn, five years out in practice, half of it's probably no longer current. So yep. it's about endless continuous learning, just like you say that you do yourself. And ultimately, right. I think whether a person has gone to university or not, sometimes you will compare and contrast what you do to what others do. There is a clinic in India, in Chennai, India, which I think, if I recall, has a nice beach. It has some pretty interesting billboards that they post. And there, here's one of them. You may want to read what it says for those not watching. Yeah, so it says, let Elon explore Mars. Our mission is Uranus. And Asana, then Chennai's first col colorectal. Colorectal, colorectal and gut wellness clinic. Oh, boy. Not sure what to say about that. But what I do know is that you definitely should watch our other clips and shorts and the entire episode 17 of the Yojo Show podcast.